Okay, so in this video, we'll be covering the second lesson in electrochemistry topic 4 of Chemistry 0620 Cambridge IGCSE, alright? So, in this video, we'll mainly be talking about the electrochemical cells and electrolysis, alright? So, in electrochemical cells, we have two types of cells. We have your electrolytic cell and your galvanic cell. Electrolytic cell is a cell that uses electricity to make a chemical reaction, Galvanic cell is a cell where chemical reactions occur to give out electricity, okay? Our main focus throughout the whole lesson is going to be on electrolytic cells. So, how do electrolytic cells use electricity to make chemical reactions? Actually, they do this by using electrolysis. What is electrolysis? Electrolysis is the breakdown of ionic compounds by use of electricity. Ionic compounds, ionic compounds formed by metal and non-metal with a overall net charge of zero as positive and negative cancel each other out, forming an ionic compound crystalline lattice, okay? So electrolysis is breakdown of this ionic compound by use of electricity. There are two types of electrolysis that we are going to be discussing in this lesson. Electrolysis of molten ionic compounds and electrolysis of aqueous dissolved ionic compounds. Aqueous dissolved ionic compounds can be either concentrated solution or dilute solution, okay? Solid ionic compounds cannot conduct electricity as we have studied in topic or chapter 3. Why? Due to no free ions to move and carry charge. So, you know, due to ionic bonding, ionic compounds, there is no free space or ion for them to carry charge because all ions are used in the electric, electric lattice bonding. So, covalent compounds also do not conduct electricity because they do not undergo electrolysis, all right? Now, coming to the electrolytic cell, we know what it is. We know how it makes electricity by electrolysis. We know what is electrolysis, breakdown of ionic compounds using electricity. And we know the two types of electrolysis, molten ionic compound and aqueous dissolved ionic compound, either concentrated or dilute. Now, let's have a look at the components that make up an electrolytic cell. The first component we're going to look at is the electrolytic solution, okay? This is the ionic compound in a molten or aqueous dissolved solution that conducts electricity. The product of electrolysis will be different depending on whether the electrolytic solution is molten or aqueous dissolved and aqueous dissolved, whether it's concentrated or dilute. Electrode is a rod made of graphite or platinum through which electric current flows into and out of an electrolyte. Why graphite or platinum is necessary? Because the electrodes must be made of uh, things that conduct two properties, electrical conductors and inert chemically inactive. So graphite and platinum are both uh, conduct both of these properties. Why should they be inert so they do not form any other chemical reaction with any of the substances that are within the electrolytic cell? So there are two types of electrodes in an electrolytic cell, the cathode and the anode. The cathode is the negative electrode in an electrolytic cell. Reduction occurs at the cathode. So reduction meaning um, gain of electrons in the reactant side occurs at the cathode. Cathode gains electron at the cathode. Cations migrate towards the cathode to gain electrons. Anode is the positive electrode in an electrolytic cell. Oxidation, loss of electrons in the product side occurs at the anode. Anions migrate towards the anode to lose electrons in the product side. This is a structure of the electrolytic cell. So you have the um, electrodes, you have the cathode negative charge, electrolyte uh, anode positive one, you have electrolytic solution. Remember the short rod is always the cathode and the long rod is always the anode. Conductivity in solids and electrolytes. So conductivity in metals is usually due to electronic flow, occurs in solids and liquids without chemical change, and it's the property of elements. Electrolytic conductivity, on the other hand, is due to ions flow, occurs in liquid solutions and not solids because solids have no present ions to move around and carry charge. Chemical decomposition takes place during this time, and this is how we identify what is reduced and what is oxidized after understanding the chemical decomposition equation of the electrolytes and electrolytic process. A property of ionic compounds. 
Uh, here's another uh, mnemonic. Um, if you remember the oil rig mnemonic, oxidation is loss of electrons and reduction of gains of electrons. This is another mnemonic. Panic, meaning positive is the anode and negative is the cathode. Electrolysis charge transfer. So, uh, charge is transferred through a current. Current is a measure of the rate of flow of charge by uh, charge carriers. So common electrolytes and non-electrolytes. Common electrolytes that you're going to find is sulfuric acid, molten lead, bromide, sodium chloride, hydrochloric acid, copper chloride, and sodium hydroxide. Common non-electrolytes are distilled water, ethanol, petrol, paraffin, molten sulfur, and sugar solution. Okay, electrolysis of molten ionic compounds. Now we're going to first go through a list of rules on how to solve and identify electrolysis of molten tin ionic compounds and then we'll go through some practice questions rules first identify the electrolysis decomposition equation of the ions then write the half equation for both the cathode reduction reaction where electrons are gained in the reactant side and anode oxidation reaction where electrons are lost in the product side remember Positive ions, which are the cations, migrate to the cathode, it will always be a metal. Negative ions migrate towards the anode, always be a non-metal. In electrolysis of molten ionic compounds, all metals will form a liquid. So many a time you'll be asked to identify what changes you have observed in this electrolysis, okay? So you need to identify the state of matter of the element or compound. So this is why it's important to really remember this. Molten ionic compounds, all metals will form a liquid. And from the diatomic seven, hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, the fluorine, uh, bromine, and iodine will form a liquid, while hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, and fluorine and chlorine will form gases. Okay. So now we're going to go through some uh, practice questions on how to solve molten ionic compounds electrolysis. So we're going to go through two examples here with the diagram. And then after that, we will go through some examples without the diagram. All right. So this is the electrolytic cell. Electrolysis of molten sodium chloride. So this is the equation. Sodium chloride. This is the decomposition equation where sodium chloride is being electrolyzed into sodium and chloride, chlorine. Okay. Now I want you to identify what is the positive cation here? Sodium. Where does the cation go? It goes to the cathode. What happens at the cathode? Reduction. What is reduction? Gain of electrons in the reactant side. In the topic one of electrochemistry, we learned how to write the ionic half equations. So let's write the half equation for sodium. Sodium, remember, ion and the gained electrons in the reduction are in the reactant side. So sodium plus one electron gives sodium. What about chlorine? Chlorine is negative. Where does the negative ion go? It goes to the anode. What happens at the anode? Oxidation. What is oxidation? Loss of electrons at the product side. How do we write it? Write the ion and write the low number of lost electrons in the product sides. But chlorine charge is negative one. Does this mean it loses one electron? Yes, it does. But how many atoms of chlorine do we have? Chlorine is a diatomic element. There are two chlorine atoms. So how many electrons are lost? two electrons, one electron per atom. So 2Cl gives Cl2 plus two electrons. Remember, for diatomic elements, I know the charge may not be uh, two, but because it's diatomic, if it's minus one charge, it will still lose two electrons or gain two electrons. Why? Because two atoms are present. So each atom loses one electron or gains one electron. Electrolysis of molten magnesium oxide. This is a decomposition equation. Identify what is the positive cation? Magnesium. Where does the cation go? Cathode. What happens to the cathode? Reduction. What is reduction? Gain of electrons in the reactant side. So magnesium plus two plus two electrons gives magnesium. Oxidation uh, occurs at the anode. What is uh, What moves to the anode? Oxi oxygen, right? Oxygen is uh, oxidized, loses electrons. And oxygen now, it is diatomic and the charge is negative too. This means it will lose four electrons because two electrons are from the charge and two electrons are per each atom of the diatomic oxygen. So 2O minus 2 gives oxygen plus four electrons, all right? 
Before moving on, how to solve the uh, molten ionic compound electrolysis equations, we're gonna have a look at some color observation notes. And then in the next video, I'm going to continue this uh, sheet on how to solve molten ionic compounds in uh, without the diagram, okay? Using also color observation notes. Because usually they will ask you in the exam, what have you observed from this electrolysis reaction? And you will have to tell the color observation. So all metals will form a shiny silver color, except gold and copper. Um, fluorine forms yellow gas. Chlorine forms pale green gas. Hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen form colorless gas. Bromine can either form red if it's pure, orange, and if it's in water. And iodine will form dark gray if it's solid, and violet if it's gas. Make sure to write and remember these rules. Other than that, I will continue this uh, topic in the part two video in the next video. So um, I'll see you in that, I guess.